Good day. Today we're doing finally a really important video for me. It is the first video of my POTS Life Of series. I wanted to do this forever, but it's just life gets in the way. What the heck is POTS? Because I'm sure a lot of you looked at the intro version of like my little introductionary video and went, what the hell is that? I'm about to tell you because a few people were like, oh, what is this? I'm like, I'm literally about to tell you. It says coming soon for a reason. Anyway, let's talk about what POTS is. I have no idea why I'm doing these accents. They're awful. Postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. It is a disability. It is classed as an invisible disability, although it has some visible aspects. It is a chronic health condition. It is basically a failing of the autonomic system. What is the autonomic system? The autonomic system is your heart rate. It is your blood pressure. It is the stuff that your body should be doing naturally. But in my case, seems to have just decided to take a day off or a life off. Thanks. So my autonomic system is working, but it's just not working as most people should. It's not working as well. It's, it's in desperate need of a good replacement. It also to do with posture. When you're standing, your heart rate um, is usually even because you're not really doing anything. But in a POTS person, your heart rate can ex accelerate rapidly to try and keep the blood pumping to your head because it's not pumping enough blood to your head. You're not getting enough oxygen. Hence why POTS people get symptoms like blackouts, fainting, sweating blurry vision, trouble thinking, mind fog, many more. I'm about to go into those symptoms later. If you lie down, your blood naturally pulls, pulls into your legs and your lower body because it's not needed because you're on a horizontal, vertical, vertical, horizontal position. You stand up. Now a normal body, the heart rate increases to get the blood to your head. But in a POTS person, it, the heart goes all over the place and there's not enough blood pumping to the head and then you faint. It's fun, you should try it. Okay, so POTS tends to start around the ages of 12 to 14 and it hit me at 13 and oh my God, I thought I was dying it was that bad. And because we were living in another country, like my medical, I kept going through tests like every two weeks and I was like this until I was 19. So from the ages of 13 to 19, I was doing almost constant medical inquiry as to why I was in so much pain and as to why I was so shaky and just everything was going wrong. And it was so hard because my parents were panicking, I was panicking, I was developing depression, I was developing anxiety. And all of this going on at the same time was a really awful part of my life. Luckily it's behind me. But just, just having a doctor say, oh, it's pops, would have caused me so much mental relief. But because POTS is kind of an unknown, especially like in Italy, you weren't gonna find it in Italy. I just didn't know until quite a few years later when someone linked me in going, these are symptoms a bit like yours. Have you considered this? And I was like, oh. it was like going down a checklist of things I had. I was like, oh, this could be it. And it wasn't. Let's talk about symptoms next. Now it's not just blackouts and fainting, which is a big part of my POTS there's others as well, it's great. POTS is one of those syndromes where the symptoms are so massive, it's really hard to define what is relating to POTS and what could be relating to another condition. Symptoms include headaches, check. Fatigue, check. Palpitations, that's heart palpitations where your heart feels like a hamster running in a cage, it's horrible, check. Sweating, actually not check for me, I don't sweat that much, but I get hot flushes and they're awful. Nausea, haha, <laughs> check, constant nausea. Fainting, check. Dizziness, check. Shakiness is there as well. And also depression is linked to POTS because if you've got a lifelong debilitating illness, you tend to get a bit down. Let's talk about more symptoms because I know there's more symptoms. Tiredness, like fatigue, hella big, hella big. Shortness of breath, yes. It's like you're suddenly just done something like energetic, but in reality, you've only just stood up. That shouldn't make you, <sighs> I always feel like I'm not getting enough oxygen. That's part of it. Chest pain. I do have a lot of chest pain actually, which is useful. Gut problems like IBS. Holy shit, that is the most painful bullshit that has ever come across my life. And the pain that comes from IBS, it makes me black out. It's that bad pain. And it's at the same time, it's like, I need to find a bathroom because I need to go shit. But this condition is delightful. Poor sleep. I have insomnia. I have sleeping meds to help me stay asleep because otherwise I was just not getting enough sleep in the day. And if I don't get enough sleep, I get ill. Not even, oh, I feel tired. I get sick. My body can produce a temperature. It produces nausea. I have a headache. And that's just from not getting enough hours sleep. I don't know how I got through education. I must have just been sick constantly. I felt sick constantly. And visual problems like 
excessive glare, blurred or tunnel vision. I don't have that actually, I'm very lucky. Perhaps I'll get that later. Right, we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on to like, why, what, like, get wet, when, what, why, what, how? I can't talk today. So we're gonna talk about triggers and this is triggers of pots. I'm just gonna read down the list and tell you what's affecting me and what isn't. Excess heat, yes, it fucking is annoying. After eating, literally, eating causes the symptoms. It's the most stupid design flaw of a symptom ever. Eating shouldn't make you sick. It does. After eating a meal, my first reaction is to lie down to try and process the pain, the nausea, and the just general feeling of discomfort. I shouldn't get that from eating. Speed of postural change, like don't stand up too quickly, that's kind of a given because that just makes me faint. Dehydration, yes. Don't lose track of your water, kids. Stay hydrated because in the case of POTS people, you will faint. Time of day, awful in the morning. So bad that I've gone to a university that's a night university to help deal with the symptoms because I couldn't go to a university during the daytime. Menstrual period. Now, I'm not gonna be getting these anymore because of testosterone, but hell yes, it makes everything so much worse. I mean like 10 times worse, 20 times worse even. It's just awful. Alcohol. I don't drink alcohol that much. I only drink it when I know that I'm okay to be ill the next day. Because the moment I start drinking alcohol, all my symptoms get worse because it dilates the, it dilates the blood vessels and then suddenly you can't pump enough oxygen or something to your head or to your body or some, some scientific stuff like that. I'm not the best at describing what this is. Go to a scientist, they'll tell you. Exercise, awful. Make me feel so much worse. Conditions also associated with POTS. I'm hypermobile, it means that my joints are very like bendy and I can do all the bullshit with my body. Like I can touch my own arm, my own shoulder and absolute bullshit with my hands and arms and stuff like that. I'm hypermobile. Hypermobile people often have POTS or it's linked for some reason. We're not entirely sure why. Ugh. Low blood pressure. Low blood pressure is a very common trait of POTS people. I've got very low blood, blood, blood pressure. So many other conditions that are related to POTS, like even conditions like diabetes, cancer, multiple sclerosis, Lyme disease can trigger POTS. And POTS is a lifelong condition because it affects your heart and your autonomic system. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a big condition that not a lot of people know about but is very much there and as, as research develops, it's gonna become more known, I think. I've done what is POTS? I've done living with, um, I've done all my links. I'm checking, I'm doing a checklist of what I need to talk about because otherwise I just rant for a good long time. My diagnosis journey, I've done that. It was hell, but it got sorted in the end. Although can you believe it, when I first found out about POTS, like obviously me and my mum do a lot of stuff together because she's like my medical like secretary. I have got, massive boxes of medical files from all the tests I've had to do during my life. So she knows when things happened, why things happened, when did I get this test? Because I've got a short term memory issue. So of course the doctor says, when did you have this test done? I'm like, uh, last year. So I bring my mum into everything because she knows everything. So she came with me to the doctors um, and we needed a referral to the pot specialist in London. And we'd printed out like the web page of POTS just to like remind ourselves of like some of the information and he asked to see the page and he read down it and then he put it down slid it back across the desk then looked us two in the eye at the doctor at this um doctor surgery said now you know you can't believe everything you read on the internet he did this because it looked like i was a female and my mum's female and he did this because we were apparently we were like seeing stuff like hypochondriac seeing stuff. It was bullshit. We went to a different doctor, got that referral, and instantly upon the testing for POTS, I was like, oh hell yeah, they got POTS. Bullshit. Sexist fucking bullshit doctor. And I'm always hoping I see him in the waiting room because I just want to run up to him and be like, fucker, your bitch has got POTS. You were wrong. Sexist. So, <laughs> anyway, yeah. Even if, like, if the symptoms are all lining up and your doctor is a bullshit doctor and says something a bit iffy, just go, yeah, you know what, fine, I'll go to a different doctor. And just check it, because checking it, you know, can rule out so many bloody things. So yeah, that was my diagnosis story, although it's much longer than that, but I'm not even going to go into that, because that is a long time. What can be done for it? Yeah, what can be done for it? There are medications you can take to try and bolster your heart rate or blood pressure or heart heart like everything um, that's autonomic I've tried a few and they haven't done anything for me so far 
but I've found that eating small amounts takes away the nausea so I, I don't eat big meals like three times a day I eat like five tiny meals enough to get keep going but not enough to like set off my symptoms and it's little things like that you, you learn how to deal with life next time you're talking about how does that impact on real real life like out and about people's perceptions of me out and about without having like a mobility aid to show that I've got a disability and I'm hoping that in this series I'm actually going to be bringing in a few friends to talk about their invisible disabilities or their disabilities I'm hoping in this video series to raise awareness of this of these issues that youngsters and all people are facing but aren't really talked about that much and if I can use my platform for anything I want to use it for this and to be a positive impact I'm not sure if I am I'm pretty sure I'm just an idiot yelling at a camera for a good 10 minutes as always I really hope you enjoy this if you like what I do if you want to see more about this series if you want to see more of the videos I've done then please like and subscribe down below and you can have a semi-enjoyable time watching my videos hopefully Anyway, I'm going to go out to the shops and get myself some chocolate. Have a lovely day.